What's up, long cool ladies? Welcome back to the channel. Today is one of the simplest, yet one of the most important parts of any daily routine, facial cleansers. This may not be catering too much towards my MTS sort of cross-dressing audience, but I argue it is one of the most important products that you absolutely need in any beauty routine. And if you're just starting out with makeup and you know really investing a lot in your appearance, then a cleanser is one one of the barest things you need to worry about. It makes all the difference. We're gonna get right down into it, but if you do not know anything about me in particular, my name is Demetria Sparrow. I work in aiding trans women, cross-dressers, or anyone who wants to present themselves feminine and giving you all the knowledge and skills that you need in order to become the long cool lady that I know you are inside. A facial cleanser is a skincare product meant to remove makeup, oil, dead skin cells, or any pollutants within the skin. It keeps the pores clear and open, preventing skin conditions such as acne. It inevitably leaves your skin looking cleaner, brighter, more youthful looking. It actually makes your makeup look better. Your face is basically the canvas to whatever your makeup is going to be going on. So if there's oil, there's dead skin cells, there's a lot of buildup on your face, that's going to be showing up in your makeup. If your skin is clear, bare, and bright, anything you put on it is going to enhance all of that. The better your skin is, the less makeup you actually end up needing. It's almost like you don't need to, you know, create good skin. It's like you already have, you know, great skin. One of the things I find a lot of us trans girls tend to do, at least when we're starting out, is we tend to put a lot of makeup on. It sort of ends up clocking you faster than a Michael Clark Duncan voice coming out of you. So what it also does is even when you remove your makeup with whatever you're using, there still could be makeup etched deep into your pores and it's stuff that you don't uh, catch. And so when you cleanse after your makeup, you're fully removing any other makeup residue that could be there. So it fully leaves your skin bare, leaving nothing to uh, build up over time and slowly damage your skin. Types of cleansers. So let me make one sort of thing clear. You will find cleansing products that sort of look like this. This is the Clinique cleansing balm called Take the Day Off. Does it do all the things I, I've said? Kind of yes, but we're mostly looking at cleansers that more resemble these products. I'm more talking about cleansers that are more part of your daily routine stuff you would use once or twice a day, where it's more soapy and lathery and its main objective is for your face and is meant to clean your face. So first you have more sort of gel cleansers. These are for deep cleansing, removing excess oil from very clogged pores. And these cater generally towards a more oily or acne prone sort of skin type. You have sort of more creamy uh, kind of cleansers. They're not like literal moisturizing creams. When you lather them up, they generally still get pretty soapy. These tend to be a little little more gentler and they tend to be a bit more hydrating on your skin. They're more generally catering towards more sensitive or dry sort of skin types. Then you have more foam washes. These are in between a gel and a cream. These sort of start off as a gel or cream base, but once you lather them up, they get very foamy. They're generally more for combination skin types, but I wouldn't swear by, you know, a gel is only gonna work for, you know, oily skin types, but just to give you a general sort of overview. Now, when you jump into makeup and skincare for the first time, there's gonna be a lot of uh, sort of terms that you notice more and more whenever you walk into the drugstore or any makeup store. And one of them is micellar water. This is the Garnier Micellar Cleansing Gel Wash. So what is micellar water? Micellar waters feature what are called micelles, being tiny oil molecules. 
They're suspended in soft water and they attract oil, dirt, and makeup. Micellar cleansers tend to be a little more gentle. They're free of alcohol and they tend to work on more sensitive skin types. There is arguments in the skincare community as to whether micellar water is a good cleanser or even a good enough sort of cleanser. I actually really like micellar waters for removing makeup. Picking the right cleanser for you with any makeup product or any skincare product, you have to take into account what your skin type is because every product off the shelf doesn't work the exact same way. To give you a general rundown on skin types, on a general level, you have oily, uh, you have acne prone, you got dry skin, sensitive skin, uh, mature skin, and combination skin. You might have just normal skin with not a lot of uh, issues involved, but you're a rarity if that's the case. If you are oily or acne prone, you need a cleanser that is strong enough to get rid of all the excess oil your face accumulates throughout the day. Gel-based ones with salicylic acid and zinc tend to work really well, but then again, on on the flip side, someone with dry skin, if they used that same cleanser, they're gonna have a very difficult time. That cleanser for oily skin is meant to get rid of a lot of excess oil and debris. If you have dry skin, it's gonna be too stripping. It's gonna be too abrasive. So you need something that has a little more hydration and isn't gonna be as overly stripping to your moisture barrier. For sensitive skin, this is highly recommended, the Vanna Cream Gentle Facial Cleanser. It's free of dyes and fragrance and it has slight hydration. Micellar and gel washes tend to cater to these sort of skin types. Combination can be a little more on the difficult side. The thing is you need something that is preferably lightweight. You need something that will get through to those oily parts of your face, like that T-bone sort of area. It's not gonna be overly stripping to where it might get towards your chin or your cheeks. Gels or creams are great for this, for getting towards the oily areas and not being too abrasive on the drier areas. What to avoid in a facial cleanser? Well, the first thing I would make sure is that it says it's for the face. You don't want something, I've heard stuff of people using like a three in one sort of product that may work on your hair, your body, and then your face. It's sort of saying it works for all of these parts. Your face is far more delicate than places like your hair and your body. It is more exposed to UV rays, there's far more muscles in there, and it's far thinner, delicate skin. It's a whole other animal. There's cleansers and then there's sort of facial scrubs. You'll find stuff that looks like this. These are what are called facial facial cleansers or gel wash. You will find stuff that is called a face scrub. Those are not cleansers and they're not meant to be done on the face every day, let alone twice a day. You'll find often in drugstores the St. Ives facial scrubs, like the apricot scrub or watermelon scrub or whatever. When you run it through in your hands, products like that are very gritty. They're rough. They're more like exfoliators. Uh, with these, they're not meant to be gritty. They're just gentle sort of soaps that you use on your face. How do I cleanse? So the first thing you need to do is wet your face. That is what they often recommend. They tend to work best on a wet face. You take a little bit from the pump and you lather it up into your hands and you gently massage it into your skin very, very gently for about 45 seconds to about a minute. You can do this in your shower, absolutely. When you're massaging it into your skin, I found when you have facial hair, when you go back and forth in certain areas, it can be very uncomfortable. So in areas of the chin zone, and the upper lip, I find it's more uncomfortable and it shouldn't be uncomfortable. With these areas, I sort of just more scrub a little downward and after that, rinse it off with some water and pat it dry with your towel. This is how I would dry with a towel. 
Just like that, you don't want to drag your face. You never want to be too abrasive with that skin. Miscellaneous sort of things to keep in mind that I don't know if uh, a lot of people would really, you know, consider. I would advise you to be a little more hygienic. You're cleaning your face, right? When after you do that, you basically don't want to enter your bed and go to sleep on a bed sheet or pillow that hasn't been cleaned in three weeks. That kind of defeated the whole purpose, right? Anything that you put against your face, any sort of fabrics like that, like towels, pillowcases or blankets. You want to be washing those very often, especially towels. Towels are the nastiest thing that could enter your beauty routine. This is the thing you're patting yourself with uh, to dry yourself after you're using this particular product. So you just want to make sure it's clean. When do I cleanse? Uh, the thing is, I generally tend to cleanse twice a day, maybe once a day if I'm really tired after work. Generally, you would cleanse in the morning. I find especially in summer, whenever I wake up, I'm shiny. You could absolutely do it when you're showering. That's totally fine. And at night. At night is probably way more important. Some people find in the morning your face hasn't really gone through too much and it might be just like a little too much for your skin to handle. Whenever I wear makeup, I'm cleansing twice a day. So when it's a makeup day for you, I would cleanse before your makeup and I would cleanse after your makeup. Before your makeup, you're cleansing to make your skin as bare and clean as possible before you put any makeup over it. And secondly, you would cleanse after your makeup. It's important to get rid of any residue whatsoever. You want to make sure that you're pairing it up with a moisturizer. If I ever recommend having two skincare products, it's a moisturizer and a cleanser. They kind of are interchangeable. So once you're done cleansing, it's washed, it's bare, so it needs some hydration. So within 15 to 30 minutes, you got to put on a moisturizer. I find after 15 to 30 minutes, you've kind of missed that point. It sort of needs that moisture kind of right away. It's kind of like uh, when you shave, if you don't put like an aftershave or a moisturizer in time, you get kind of dry and you get a little itchy and I noticed this I was like when I shower I usually cleanse but my routine is sort of I cleanse do all this stuff in the shower I step out but wet hair bugs me it makes me cold it's dripping down my back uh, and whenever I put in a ponytail it hurts because of all the weight so I blow dry my hair and that can take 10 to 15 minutes and then I basically want to shave after that and then it's like by the time I get to the cleanser part it's basically too late. What I do now is I shower, dry my hair, and then I jump into my full skincare, and then that's about it. Products I would recommend to you, I wanted to make sure I had sort of enough examples and products that could cater to your skin. So some of these vary drastically in price, but I wanted to give you enough variety to get you started and give you an idea of the products that are out there. First is the Youth to the People Kale and Green Tea Cleanser. This is a little more on the expensive side, uh, but this is highly, highly regarded. The Simple Micellar Gel Wash is very economical, has generally been working well for various skin types for quite a while. It does enough for oily skin, it's not too abrasive for dry skin types. The Alpha H Balancing Cleanser, again, is a little more on the expensive side, caters more towards combination skin, it has a little more hydrating ingredients with aloe and vitamin E that targets a lot of redness in your skin. The Milk makeup vegan milk cleanser. This is fragrance free and it caters more towards normal to dry skin. The Herbivore Pink Cloud Rose Water Cleanser caters more towards drier skin types. It has more of a jelly kind of texture and it ends up frothing up in your hand. The Crave Beauty Matcha Hydrating Cleanser. For dry skin, it has a lot of hydrating ingredients to not strip your moisture barrier. The Neutrogena Hydro Boost Fragrance Free Cleanser. Another great drugstore option for dry and sensitive skin. The First Day Beauty Pure Face Skin Cleanser is cream-based, great for dry skin types. The La Roche-Posay Tolerane Hydrating Cleanser, again for dry skin and does a good enough job at cleaning all of the excess and debris in your skin without stripping you too much. And of course, the Vanagreem Gentle Skin Cleanser, free of fragrance and dyes. These kind of look 
really similar. It's like blue and white. They're highly regarded and they tend to do a really good job on sensitive skin. So good combination. This is the moisturizer, this is the cleanser. The Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. This includes soy proteins high in amino acids, keeping the skin soft as well as soothed. Again, targets sensitive skin types. This is the CeraVe moisturizer that is very well known, but their cleansers are very highly revered as well. The CeraVe Renewing Salicylic Acid Cleanser targets oily skin or skin that is very prone to breakouts. The salicylic acid in it goes deep into the pores in order to push out all of the dead skin cells and debris that is in them. And the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser. These two are very similar. They basically have the same sort of ingredients, only this one does not have salicylic acid. The La Roche-Posay Tolerane Purifying Cleanser. Packs enough of a punch to get into oily skin types. The Inculus Salicylic Acid Cleanser is economical, targeting acne-prone skin and breakout-prone skin. And lastly, the Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser cleanser is generally good for all skin types, is soap-free, fragrance-free, and removes the dirt, oil, and makeup in your skin without being overly stripping. I like nowadays putting in a list of products. I want it to be that you at least know about them, so when you walk into a store, you're not as sort of in the dark as to what these are gonna do. So these are all great starting points to try out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And to let me know you wanna see more content like this, be sure to give me a like and subscribe for future content. Stay beautiful, everyone. Take care.